Hello, good evening. We are live uh, by the skin of our teeth. Let me just hand this to really? my pro, my Why guest. Why do I want the Daily Mirror? <laughs> yes, well, I'm going to hand you some papers because uh, we didn't arrive here in time for the show. Uh, but that's nothing new. Uh, we are live, as I say, um, live at revelationtv.com. Uh, will be the email address, of course, as usual, uh, that you'll be able to partake in tonight's program. And I would say that um, there's a lot of things that perhaps you at home would also like to comment on. And uh, obviously, all the contact details will be on the screen throughout the program. Um, we do want to hear from you because it's really all about you. But the thing is that when you say it's all about you, uh, it's all about what's happening in the world and why and how that uh, interlaces, that's a good word, interlaces with scripture. Because we need to know where we are in the stream of times because that way we're on the ball as far as being able to get through the days which are going to come, uh, which are going to be difficult. And I'm just still handing out these uh, to you, uh, Tim. Yesterday's because these news, are Howard, the, the headlines news. Uh, but I know they're earlier today, but there's a lot happening. And behind the headlines is what is what Simon's programs is all about. <clears throat> I would say that we could actually dig a little bit deeper. But we don't want to just dig deep to find fault because we're all he without sin or she uh, cast the first stone. And we don't want to be doing that. But they all seem to be about Prince Andrew. Uh, is he still a prince? I think he is. So I was checking some of. The, I, I was up about five o'clock this morning, and I oh my sent goodness, you what are you doing? Newspaper clip clippings. <laughs> I was trying to find them. Yeah, but um, yeah, Prince Andrew is a, is a very very sad story, and it, it sort of comes down to obviously um, everything hidden will one day be revealed. Oh, this is one of the headlines in the but Daily the Express. The point is because of that settlement, we'll never know. That, you know, in cross-examination from both sides, what the story is. And the other thing is I'm a little bit suspicious because there's so much money that went to um, Thingmajig. What's his name? Um, Epstein. Mm -hmm. And really, the, the real scandal is what, what, who else was paying Epstein? Uh, you know, whatever, hundreds of millions. And by having it buried in, in a settlement, it means it won't be, um, it, it, it possibly will never come to light. So I heard that it could be up to 12 million, the, the settlement. Who called you? Um, but the point is, there's two sides to the settlement. So one is what is paid to um, the lady and the, and the other is what's paid to her charity. So I, th I think it's, it's a really tragic, for the Queen to have in a platinum jubilee year. It's really tragic that that should be on Do you think this plate. might lead to the, the collapse, really, of the, uh, the firm, as it's It could called. be, because the, because the media are now hitting on Charles, so to speak, um, to try and, um, you know, expose a charity that he's patron of. The, the, there was some, you know, cash for honours with the Arab... Prince, they probably don't have it on. It'll be on tomorrow's papers. Yeah, but the sad thing is that, you know, we're, nobody's perfect. That's the problem. And, but we're always That's so right. quick at, off the mark at finding fault. But, but as soon he, as you're exploiting someone who's underage, that is a, that is a scandal. And, yeah. and having an industry of sort of trafficking your underage girls. And he may have been just caught in a photo with her. We don't know, do we? Yeah. But at the end of the day, he was with this uh, devil. Uh, Epstein, who made an industry out of this game, but Clinton was in there, a whole load of other celebrities. Don't want to get Rev TV sued, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but they were all allegedly. Uh, they were all Clinton allegedly. And connected. others, which are Just, quite big names. Yeah. But the thing is that, do you think maybe that Prince Andrew is right, being the fall guy and taking on the chin for everyone, and but maybe they will be chipping in to pay the 10 or 12 million pounds? Well, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Because this undisclosed, everyone's saying, where's the money going to come from? They're saying, oh, he's got to sell his chalet in wherever that is. The Queen is. is going to bail him out. Or the Queen. And then what a shock. So they can keep the media rolling on it because it's using Crown money to pay for this um, sordid um, settlement. But, but it's, it's the, all the other money that they should really be tracing, I think. I suppose the question is, um, if Prince Andrew actually did associate 
uh, with Epstein for procurement of uh, women. Mm. Uh, was he aware that they were underage? Uh, yeah, I think I. Th um, I, I think once, once there's money involved, big money involved, um, it's not my area of expertise, yeah. but they'll do anything. Well, maybe they help to bail him out. Because the thing is that Prince Andrew probably knows quite a lot about who else might have been involved. So to be cross-examined if you like, yes. would be really dangerous for them. Yes, exactly. That's so that, and, and, and do you think Epstein was really committing suicide, or well, was that's he not the other just question. A, was he not just a big risk to the others that could be exposed? Very big risk, very big risk uh, to people with a lot of power. And I'm not a, a conspiracy theorist on this mm -hmm. one. I think it's just plain for all to see, mm -hmm. that, you know, that he was, you know, it was an industry. And I don't. No one has ever actually said, right, let's do the Panama Papers on all of Epstein's money and all of his emails and all of his communications. Why not? It's, it's weird. That why this why can't silent. they do it? Correct. Yeah, because they would actually Correct. find a, a paper trail to yeah. names right at the very top. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that, I mean, whatever you want to call it, prostitution, call girls, um, mm. mademoiselles or whatever, uh, these, this has been going on. It's the oldest tra trade in the book, isn't it? All the way back yeah. to the beginning of yeah. time. Yeah. <coughs> and I think um, there'll be many people that would have fallen foul uh, to being prey, if you like, to being drawn into that net. But this has got a picture, and that, that picture, which Alan Dershowitz apparently emailed uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and said, is this authentic? And she said, I think it is. So, so Andrew's what? case, the picture of Andrew with, I can't remember her name, uh, Virginia Guthrie or something. Yeah. Um, Gaffrey on. Um, uh, that was an authentic picture. So he was arguing that she's just obviously a gold digger, you know. So all of the build up to the case was him denigrating her, saying it's not a real picture, I don't ever remember meeting her. And then you've got an email which will come out in court wiping that away with a, a senior lawyer who basically asked Ghislaine, is it. Um, is it really? And she said she thought it was. Oh. So all of Andrew's arguments mm. fell into dust and he, and he was seriously exposed. Mm. So what would you do? I mean, <clears throat> why would you settle um, if you really thought you were innocent? <clears throat> because it's so damaging for the Queen. <clears throat> yeah, so but you that, can that's use that argument. Done. That's already done, the damage. Yeah, the damage is there, but the damage is that it could go on for months leading up to the Platinum Jubilee. And part of the settlement is that she can't do anything public until after the Jubilee. Oh, really? Yeah, so there's a whole load of little wangles in there. <coughs> Bad timing. Is, mm. it's, it's not good timing, but it, it's not probably going to go away. And, and now the media story is, is where's the money coming from? And is it coming from the Crown? You know, should they have all this money? And then the other story, which is hot on the heels, is Prince Charles uh, and his charity. So oh, the media are not letting up. It's as though they want to destroy the, royals. the Queen mm. in her final, you know, after all that she's done for the country. And I, th I think that that's Very sordid as well. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> so that's Excuse one me, story. I'm going to have some water. Yeah. That's we, one just, story. we just had a pizza, didn't we? Yeah, we had a pizza. And I I'm sure there was a, a viewer that was in the oh really in the in the pizza place as yeah. well. So you may, we may as well admit yeah. it then. I say yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we had a pizza, yeah, had a pizza. <laughs> and a glass of red wine. Anyway, uh, so what about Russia? I mean, it's here we were a few days ago. We were going to be seeing Russia invade today. Yeah. Well, that was a load of rubbish. It hasn't. It was all egged up. Uh, Putin. Because Putin really holds all of the cards or all of the tanks. And so, um, you know... Tanks a lot. Putin, yeah, tanks a lot. And he, he, but he is able to move them in, move them out. One thing Richard Kemp said this evening, look, you know, number one, the Stoltenberg, who's the head of NATO, is saying that there's no evidence he's really moved anything out. 
I, I sent a picture, to, a video to my son, who's, who's an expert on tanks, um, showing, so Putin had this sort of video which he put out of the tanks all being sent back on a train backwards or over a bridge. And Nolly said, they look like models to me. <laughs> you know, anything is possible. Yeah. But the, the evidence is that he set up the field hospitals ready for an invasion. But it could all be part of the, the bluff. charade, the bluff. Mm. Um, and to prove I can do it, as it were, I can press a button and I can get 200,000 troops. And that is quite a threat to hold over Ukraine, even if he doesn't invade. Yeah, and I was listening to uh, some particular uh, representative of the Russian government um, speaking on Sky, I didn't, I could only hear it, I couldn't see the names, but it was, uh, he was just sort of like, you know, you know, this is ridiculous. The West have uh, been hyping this up. We're, we're, we're not anywhere near uh, being ready to come invade Ukraine. Uh, this is rubbish. Yeah. But then, of course, when he was challenged about, well, why are your troops right on the border? Well, we can go somewhere. We can go anywhere we want. But why on the border? You know, why not exactly. go somewhere else exactly. than uh, being a threat? Um, but it, we've all played into the, uh, the, if you like, the game that Putin has actually come out really smiling, if you like, and saying, I've got the world attention and I'm, you know, I'm, here I am. And, you know, NATO can... And his demands, you see, what he said is, his demands have not been met. And his demand wasn't just that Ukraine shouldn't join NATO, which is unlikely anyway, because NATO doesn't admit a country which is, has, a, has a border dispute. His demand is that all of the other countries, Poland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Romania, that they all pull out of NATO. So that is a very big demand. And- Because that's second line. Yeah. Now, I, I've got a big map of Europe in my office because we supply um, homeschoolers right across Europe where it's legal mm. and schools. Uh, and it's very interesting when you look at Poland, and by the way, Poland have been calling people back from Britain. We've got friends who have been called back to, who are not quite your age, my age, under 65. To fight. Um, to serve. Yeah. To enlist. On the front line. Now, and I just looked at my map and there was Poland with, it's not a matter of Russia feeling surrounded. Poland is basically surrounded totally. yeah. by, you know, if, if Russia have Ukraine and you have Belarus and you have Moldova, you, you know, they're very vulnerable. And that's why they're talking about sending NATO battalions into Poland and Hungary and Romania. Yeah. So it is probably not going to happen in Ukraine, but there, there is definitely saber rattling going on. Yeah, talk about saber rattling. Maybe some some of our viewers uh, would actually know the answer to this, but the, uh, for the life of me, I can't find it. But it's the scripture which talks about there would be a pushing and shoving uh, between the nations in these end times. Now I'm not sure if it's Ezekiel somewhere or it's in the New Testament. It's somewhere like that, and it's probably in the latter parts of you know the 30 chapters 30 through to the, the end of Ezekiel. Somebody can. Let us know live at revelationtv.com that this pushing, it's almost like this saber rattling, you know, the, uh, of war. But the thing is, you know, Tim, what we've got to remember is, as well as other things falling apart in our societies today, you know, with great inflation and the problems that were shortages of this, that and the other and, and the prices of, uh, you know, gasoline, you know, sort of diesel, whatever you want to call it, and also other uh, utilities that are going sky high that we, we could face a, a, an economic downturn. But the scripture that always comes to mind to counter that we're not necessarily right near the end uh, of the heading for Armageddon is that when they cry true peace and security, then sudden destruction right. comes. So that means that there has yeah. to be a time when everything looks hunky-dory. Yeah. And we're not, we've not seen that period yet, have we not? That's right. We, you know, we've had a fairly benign period, really. I don't know since Tony Blair, yeah, two thousands got in, and then, and then it was a very, you know, the economy, the money was flowing. Um, Mervyn King basically said, "Look, we can have a, 
you know, whatever, low interest, low inflation, you know, indefinitely. And it's never been so good on that side. It was amazing, really. And, you know, even up to the credit crunch, you know, that was... And then from then on, I would say that we've been pretty fragile. As, and, and Putin, people like Putin and Xi Jinping, they watch the West. You know, they play the long game and they know that we're weak now. Mm. We're weak. We've lost our sense of who we are, our identity. We've lost our Christian heritage. That, there was a time when the Chinese would study that and, and see that this was the reason that we were strong. It's because of our Christian heritage. And now they know, look, with all the woke progressives, they've trashed the Christian heritage. So everyone's at sixes and sevens. It's a good time to take on Taiwan and Ukraine. Yeah. I think that's where we're at. So, okay, live at revelationtv.com. Let's have a look, see what emails you've got there. Yeah. As well. So email, the first emails that have come through are not really connected to what we're talking about. So let's just go for it. So Les asks, not pointing the finger at any individual, but some comments. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. None righteous, no, not one. Agree with all of that. Uh, the only something we believers are righteous is because Jesus has imparted his righteousness to us. And Jesus is the only hope of the world. That is an absolute fact. And that's the key to the Christian message, is that... Um, Paul, if you, if you put Galatians, which we're studying with Derek and um, John, and John, I nearly said Alan, yes. um, with Derek and John, um, and you, which we're studying now, and you put it like a tracing paper over the verses, over Romans, and you shift it around, there, there's like a parallel. Paul's saying something, which is obviously that we can't get righteousness through the law. And this is what um, um, he's saying, only, we are only righteous because of what Jesus has done. But we've just literally, we, we pre-record the stuff, we've just gone through Galatians 3. And it's, it's talking about the promise of Abraham, which preceded by 430 years um, the law of Moses. And, 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 he, and Paul is focusing on this promise, and the promise is a gift, you see. The law of Moses was just there to steer us towards understanding the gift of righteousness. Mm. And we're only righteous, we were chatting with someone in the pizza place earlier, that we're, we, we're not here because we've achieved it ourselves. It's because it's been given to us. And this is yeah. the righteousness he's, he's talking about. And of course, sin is everywhere. And I can't, I can't go through all of what we're studying on Bible study, because it would take No, no, long. it gives a game away. But, um, well, it gives a game uh, away. So that was um, Les, that was more statements. Then we had a question from Anil. Wondered, similar to the one we had last week, if you remember, um, wondered if I could ask you a question. Was Judas doing God's will in fulfilling, fulfilling scripture? If so, should we be grateful for what he did? Thank you and God bless. Do you remember someone asked last week about are we predestined, you know, yeah. what's, and I sort of try to distinguish between God's will. foreknowledge mm -hmm. and our free will. Um, but that's a really good question, yeah. because the thing is, in a way, the answer is yes, he did uh, fulfill yeah. uh, God's will. But there had to be someone who had, a, if you like, a indispicious, yeah. what's the word? In a disposition, a disposition. Yeah. Yeah. to actually be inclined to, um, I suppose, deny Christ in that sense. And take the money. Yeah. And also the political aspiration. See, he had a... Yes, that's true. Understandably, you know, Jesus the Messiah should be a conquering, you know... Should have come get rid of the Romans. And so he was trying to, which uh, there's a danger, we all try and do that. We try and do God's will for him, as it mm -hmm. were. And, and I think... It's a sad story, but in answer to the question, he was fulfilling God's plan, yeah. but he wasn't a puppet. He uh, chose, as you say, he was yeah. predisposed. Yeah, he was willing it. to do it because the thing is that when it was, um, he was given the opportunity by the, the high priests or by the, the Sanhedrin to actually um, give Jesus away, uh, and he knew what the consequences would be for Jesus. So 
And when Jesus was there, said there was somebody at the Last Supper, somebody is going to deny me and somebody, you know. And then one of the disciples, whoever it was, was it John or somebody, Peter? Uh, it's not me, is it, Lord? You know, because I mean, they, yeah. you know, they were hoping it wasn't them genuinely, yeah. you know, because we, none knows the heart of men more than God yeah. and it's yeah. treacherous and wicked, isn't it? Yeah. Says exactly. the scripture. Exactly. So when it came to Judas, he just, yeah, he knew it was him. Mm. And he had, yeah, nod and a wink and off he, he knew go. what he was going to do and yeah. he said... Because know, he'd already you know. been talking to the religious leaders and also with a view to getting rid of this meddlesome guy, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, and, and of and course possibly. the devil thought that he was sort of winning one over, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by, by engineering this arrest and all the rest of it, but it was God's perfect plan for redemption that the Lord would, and the Lord knew it in, in Gethsemane, he knew what was going to happen. But I would say this in uh, his defence. His defence, yeah. Is the fact is he committed suicide basically, mm. and not many people who have done a dastardly de mm. deed would actually, you know, they probably justify it in their own mind and say, okay, yeah, he deserved that, you know, and all da 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 da. -da. But actually, he threw himself over a precipice, and I know. he was his guts were yeah, I know. torn asunder. Mm. So you know, m maybe there is some way of redemption yeah but i think the thing as uh, suicide is a very sensitive one isn't it because mm. we all i mean i know and we know people have, have, have taken their own lives um that's a very big subject which you might get emails mm. on but the well, let me raise I think that the devil now. can rob someone can delude someone mm. can um they can lose their faculties and he can take them because yeah. that's his objective is to destroy life yeah so i i don't think that true. that per se, would mean that someone loses their salvation. But the thing about, because um, I've known a very, someone very dear to us in the family who was the most godly person I knew, who, who fell into a depression and then with the medication, you know, didn't get out of it. Um, and so it's a, a really tragic story. But um, so Judas me... did not repent. And that is the difference. But didn't he? You, he I don't he think did. he did. Uh, you were, none of us were yeah. there. No. When he threw himself up that precipice, he knew that was the end, okay? Yeah. And um, so therefore, was that not a form of repentance? Only, he, only God knows uh, what is mm. in the heart. It's like the Nuremberg trials, you've got von Ribbentrop repented because we know the pastor that went in and shared the gospel with him. So, so no one is beyond redemption, Redem but all we can say is if someone doesn't repent, mm -hmm. there is no way no, that's true. Um, through. Yeah. Um, as as we know with Goering, he just took the cyanide pill. You mm. know, he wasn't going to suffer the consequences. Yeah, so let me ask the question: yes. Is suicide, uh, in your eyes, right or wrong? Uh, is there a is there a way that uh, could, one could be forgiven if one finds themselves committing having to face that moment of taking your own life? Will is there redemption there for them, or not? Mm. Just a bit of us. Oh, well, I can't answer that. We have to wait for the viewers. That's right. Live at Revelation, or live, yeah, at revelationtv.com. Yeah, it's a very important subject. Um, good evening. Is Putin, an, or, is Putin an orthodox Christian, or Putin is an orthodox Christian, so why would he behave like this? Um, why did, it's a bit of an enigma. Okay, why did the guy we were just talking about? Judas. Uh, Judas. Why did he do what he did? Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he, he was, was even there with the Lord. Yeah. So, I mean, if Putin is a, an Orthodox Christian and he does believe in uh, biblical principles because um, Stephen Fry went to interview him um, and uh, challenged him on same-sex uh, relationships and Putin would have nothing to do with that. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit of a surprise for Stephen Fry, or it yeah. wasn't a surprise, but they thought yeah. he chalked him up as uh, being homophobic. a religious nut or yeah. homophobic, you know. He spoke um, early on in his presidency, <clears throat> excuse me, to the, the annual conference of the Russian Orthodox Church, and he was asked what his mission was, or he, uh, he said, this is my mission, and it is to, to halt the spread of Western decadence. 
I, of course he was speaking to that audience, but this is the problem, and I'm not here to justify what Putin's doing, and we can talk a lot about that, about that. but the problem that we have in the West is that, that it, it has become decadent. You know, when Bush went into Iraq for regime change, the next thing that popped up was Abu Ghraib, Abu Ghraib, the prison, where the American soldiers were taking pornographic mid videos of, um, of prisoners yeah. and mocking them. And, and that meant that where's the moral high ground to go in yes. to say we have a better system when that is the end result? And I think that's come through decades yeah. of, of decadence. decadence. Yeah. So on the one hand, this is the irony, on the one hand, he's, he, he is a, a very powerful despot, he's engineered it, he's a very clever man, he's engineered a position where he has the power to mobilise 200,000 troops to the border of Ukraine at the flick of a switch, um, which is very, very dangerous and will cause a lot of suffering if he invades. But on the other hand, he, you know, he's cleaned up quite a lot of corruption in Russia from the Yeltsin days, and he has a vision for his country. I'm not sure the West really does have a vision for what the future holds. They talk about Western values, well, but let's, let's list them, because I can't see... Me well, there's loads of them, but yeah. they're not godly. Yeah. They're quite the opposite, and they're getting worse and worse. They're secular, and the thing is that they're okay if, they've, if they're still somehow tethered to the Christian heritage. But, and where they are, because of course they've inherited um, as it were, they're beneficiaries of, of the Christian traditions. But where they detach from those, I don't think there's anything that people know what they're fighting for. Mm. Live at revelationtv.com. I've only read two, I've yeah. only read two emails. Yeah. yeah, shall I try? Yep. Shall I read a few more? Mm. So this is uh, from Peggy, regarding Prince Andrew et al. Oh, what a tangled web this is. A very interesting program on Sky Witness about this, worth watching. The life that the Maxwells, Epsteins, and the rich and famous uh, live is something out of Hollywood. As scripture says, no one can serve God and money. And um, uh, so, so she also, uh, Peggy also said, don't read this, and I won't read it. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but um, she didn't say I didn't have to read. Before. By the way, you say the Maxwells, um, you know, there's a number of, of the Max, her siblings, Ghislaine Maxwell siblings. Mm -hmm. who, who, you, you can't say the Maxwells. Um, and she is appealing, but mm -hmm. she is convicted now. So um, it's really, really sad. The whole thing with the Maxwells is, is a very, very sad story from... The time father. that he grew up, by the way, yeah. on the border of Ukraine. What's it? You know, and his only ambition, this is um, father, uh, Robert Maxwell, his only ambition was to own a cow. And, and he was a very clever man. He learned seven languages. He, he was, uh, his whole family, apart from a couple of sisters, was wiped out by the Nazis. He escaped to Syria, came to Britain, uh, actually escaped it, from manacles, he killed his two Gestapo guards. He got to Syria, eventually ended up in Britain, learnt the English language, joined the British Army, became a captain, won the military cross, oh went um, and served in British intelligence in Berlin. Um, then, uh, I mean, it is an epic story. It's not made up, it's true. Um, and then while he was in the intelligence, you had the War of Independence in Israel, uh, and Israel was saved at birth by Czech weapons. He was Czech from Ruthenia. So there's a whole book written about how he supplied, supplied them with the lifeline of, of weapons to defend themselves. And that's why when he died, he had a state funeral in Israel oh, on the Mount of Olives yeah. with all of the Japanese, president and everyone yeah. appearing there. Um, that was one side of his story. The other side of his story was that he was obviously corrupted by all this experience. And, and so I think his moral compass was pretty haywire when he went into business. Mm. And that's why the Mirror Group, you know, pensioners were defrauded. Because it was, you know, where are your morals when, when you've gone through such a terrible um, upbringing? Yeah. And that's then his shame. kids, he had eight kids. The oldest one died in a car crash. 
and then um, and then the others were you know their kids growing up aren't they in Oxford they wouldn't know mm. um, and, and then he died on the Lady Ghislaine so named after his the daughter boat. on the yacht named mm. after his daughter yeah how sad it's quite a tragic story wow. all that success as well and yeah coming through all of those challenges and yet uh, um, failing at the last post you know, that's he why failed because he bought Macmillan Press and then, sorry, this isn't anything to yeah. do with the late show, but um, and he paid something like two, two billion, you know, just before a recession oh, and the whole thing, you know, went better. So then tempted to use the, the money for he, he, he Sorry? Was he tempted then to use the money? Yeah, that, then he was really trying to stem the hemorrhaging of, of his empire yeah. and, you know, taking money. Did they say that the, he jumped off the boat? Or was pushed. Or was pushed. Yeah, or just had a heart attack, which is what his sons, I think, testified in court about. Yeah. They thought that's. But that was at the time when all um, everything had come to the surface about the so-called misappropriation of uh, pension funds. Big time. Mm. Big time. So, good evening. Can I keep reading? Yeah. Oh, please. That's what it's all Sorry, about. My ears slipping. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Howard and Tim. That's a nice compliment. Dear Howard, okay, they've got that out of the way. So now, dear Howard, I really love your drumming by using your left foot and hands to work the hi-hat cymbal <laughs> on your song, Who's Going to Save the World? Oh. It's a great song, and I also love your steady bass drum beat that works excellent with the constant hi-hat work. I think this is a real emo. Is it a real stuff? Um, you're really blessed as a drummer. And you do belong to the Dramathon event. Please don't believe something and say that you don't qualify well, again because you do qualify easily with your strong endurance from a sincere loving fan, Dylan, in Northern Ireland. Oh, thank you, Dylan. Bless you. Um, very good evening uh, to you, Howard and Tim. As we know, Jesus died nearly 2,000 years ago. This was on the 4,000th year and he will return in the 6,000th year, which begins in 2029. The seventh yeah. year tribulation therefore begins this year by the Day of Atonement on the 6th of October. So we better get the, the, the Israel trip in fast. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. No, but the, get all we're so close, not to make fun to of that. It, that could very well be a date that is, uh, you know, right near, if not on the money. So, but we are coming to that time, the end of this 6,000 year, sometime in this 21st century. I was given a Bible by Lance Lambert and, and in it he put the Jewish year. So, you know, it's 5,000, whatever, 700 and something, maybe 900 yeah. something. But, but it's interesting because that is, is like a natural time frame mm -hmm. to, to see the six days, as it were, yeah. of man. And that's why you can't, as a real true believer, you can't believe that we evolved because there is a start date to mankind being introduced into God's kind and uh, there's a finishing date as well before Christ comes back uh, in order to put things right, you know, so, yeah, that has to happen, you know. And Derek Walker has written quite a lot on this, you know, in terms of, and he's a mathematician, so yeah. rather than get it secondhand from me, <laughs> you know, read, read Derek's books. There you go. That would be the best way. Um, Matthew, Matthew 24, 7, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Yeah, I, get, I know that one, but it yeah. doesn't say about the pushing and shoving. I'm sure no, it's... Oh, all right, okay, yeah. here we go. Um, this is Ezekiel 34, 21. Because you shove with flank and shoulder. Is that one? No, it's not that one, but that's a good one, nevertheless. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But we know in the, the latter... Chapters of Ezekiel it talks about the uh, Gog of Magog and talking about the King of the North coming against Israel mm -hmm. um, for the final battle of Armageddon. Um, but I think it was in there somewhere there was this pushing and shoving going on between the nations, the, the big nations like Russia, China mm -hmm. and the West. And, uh, you know, this would exactly be a confrontation like this. Exactly. But Jesus also said that, look, do not be afraid. These things must take place. But the end is not yet. Yeah. But thought, then he goes on, this will happen, that will happen, and all the others, which we do find ourselves pretty much in the middle of those days. But how far in, we don't know yet. 
Yeah, I was going to say, there's an interesting verse in Romans 8 where it says the whole creation is groaning as in the pains of childbirth. Well, the whole creation, the whole earth, and, and then you think of what Grady said about the tectonic plates, plates. and oh. then you think, wow, it's, it's like, you know, it's earthquakes, gr the groaning of the tectonic plates, or if you saw it like, a, a, dare I say as a man, a, you know, like a, a pregnant, a pregnancy, you know, there's a stretch marks on yes. the earth, there's tensions. Yeah. And, you know, the, the tensions that we have geopolitically are, are like, the straining That's of a good earth. Point. Yeah, but so, but the physical earth is actually good. And when you look at it, you, um, we had a, a, a map up uh, a few weeks ago where we you could see the, the Pacific Ocean and going from one side uh, of the Americas uh, all the way, well, from one side of the Pacific, the Asian side, all the way across to uh, the Americas, you know, Canada and Alaska and that. And you could see even down some of the seas, you know, even in the, uh, like uh, towards Japan and uh, New Zealand. And there's a lot of earthquakes. I mean, I've got an earthquake reminder and it goes off 200 times a day. It's a lot of activity, um, but some of them are major. Um, and this, these plates are moving. And that's why Jesus said, and his words are recorded in the book of Luke chapter 21, that when the, this roaring of the sea, which is what will happen when these plates mm. actually, they're slipping across one another now, mm. but when they actually go, um, it, it will be incredible, cataclysmic. cataclysmic. Yeah. You know, you talk about, you know, sort of 100 foot waves, that would be nothing compared to what's going to happen, yeah. you know, so. And, and so I, I think that's something in terms of the natural events, but then, you know, the shaking of the monarchy, it's, you know, there is a groaning and a well, the shaking. shaking of our finances. The shaking of the finances. Yeah, the shaking of just the way that we live, you know, because definitely, I mean, I can remember from the time of a child to now that the people's love for one another has grown cold. Yeah. You know, your neighbor isn't as friendly as it used to be, or people don't, they look down when they walk past you in the streets, everybody, you know, it's like, you know, it's because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of great, of each for each one uh, will grow cold. Amazing, yeah. the scriptures have that. So Deborah just says, um, great program, but while I do feel so sorry for the Queen, I'm really concerned about the payoff. If you were trying to shine a light on what happened to the young girls, in this case, why settle? Yeah, that did seem a bit strange that he mm. put that in his settlement statement. Money shouldn't come into it. The powerful need to be exposed. There are too many cover-ups. It's the same in Ireland. Mm. Tragic. You know, talking it's about really tragic. Um, I'm just specifically picking on Ireland, but you know, the, the things that uh, I watched um, a documentary-style program that was on uh, Netflix a few weeks ago, and it really hurt to see just the amount of abuse that goes on in the church, um, and it's allowed to go on, and the uh, priests are passed on, told to go to another. Um, area are not brought to book and yet you know the the abuses that go on actually ruin people's lives you see now uh, people actually who as a child were molested mm. by priests or you know in anyone in the church generally not just the Catholic Church because it goes on it goes yes. on and this is how? what the devil's been doing for generations just destroying lives and and then often the I'm not saying everyone who's been a victim becomes an abuser, but it does, there is a continuity. And, and I think it has happened through, sadly, through the church history. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know, it just ruins I mean, ruins people have got a deranged lives. Yeah, upbringing, it's tragic. Yeah. It ruins their life. And it then, does. And I then know, they can't have a proper relationship themselves. And no, then it, exactly. It, it, and I know on and on and people on. Yeah. actually suffered that and uh, still suffering today. Yeah, really so true. Adele writes, she says, do you think women have equal authority in Christ Jesus or not? This is very interesting, Adele, because I, I sort of quoted from uh, Galatians 3 earlier, and it, it talks about us um, uh, being sons, but it, in, that, in that sense, it's talking about us growing up into maturity and um, learning, as it were, not just to be infants, but to give and to take responsibility as heirs. But in the very following verse, I think it's in verse 27, 
it says there's neither male nor female in Christ. After saying to be clothed with Christ and with his righteousness, which is a gift, um, he then says there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female in Korea, all one in Christ. So I think that the, Paul uh, uh, complete, has been completely falsely portrayed as a kind of misogynist, you know, uh, anti or women type, um, but he absolutely isn't because he writes things like that. And he, you know, obviously had very uh, close friends. But he did, he did talk about um, Christ and the church and he did talk about um, headship. the emphasis, the headship, but also as an example, that husbands should love their wives. Mm. And in a relationship, you've got, it's got to, there's got to be something um, um, reciprocal and symbiotic. So it's ridiculous to put one down and then, and then for, for the men to lord it over, because that is not right. what No, I know. <clears throat> but it is quite clear, Tim, though, isn't it, that uh, the man is supposed to be the head of the household, but it doesn't mean to say he has to lord it over. Yeah. Um, and he's to cherish his wife. Yes. Okay? And as the weaker vessel, it says in Scripture, yeah. you know, but the problem Which is a physiological fact. It is, right. Yeah. But what we have today, or what I can see, is there's such a rise in feminism right. to the point that it's gone, the pendulum swung the other way. It's like, you know, we don't want any more of the patriarchal, um, no. biblical examples uh, from ancient times. But yet they were there as a protection for the whole family. Now you have women, with all due respect, in, a, in a, such a disarray in so many ways it's a splitting in the family. There's more, uh, you know, single parents, uh, and you don't have the covering of a husband. No, and maybe it's. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, not maybe. There are so many examples of husbands who have just abandoned their role yeah. as uh, as a husband and as a father, uh, that they've actually uh, allowed themselves to be an example why women need to be emancipated, if you want to call That's it. Right. You know. So the culture has been saying, look, you can't have macho women, you, uh, men. You, you can have macho women, but you can't have macho when, men. And the men should, you know, and they're applauded if they're more, the more effeminate they are. So the whole thing is inverted. And, and the same thing, children are too adults, adults are too childish, and it is the world that we're living in. Yeah. It is the world that we're living in. Um, so what was the, what, what's the bottom line the answer for that? Um, well, I, it, I think authority is not value, and people confuse it. So, Good point. So the, the, the it's a responsibility, if anything, more it is. than it is a value. So the man who God said, you are the one that's the, to take the lead, but with that goes an incredible responsibility to bring up the children and also to cherish the wife and to help her. She's your helpmate. But the problem is today women seem to look at men as if, like, you know, I'm just as good as you. You know, maybe they are in, in many respects yeah. in the workplace and everything else definitely. in value. But with the, it was supposed to be a compliment. Man was supposed to be a compliment to woman and woman a compliment to man. Not that it was a woman that was to be the helpmate totally in that sense for the man and for him to dominate. That's... Yeah, and... Um Mistake. It's a really important subject because it, because it's the model of Christ and the church. Mm -hmm. So so if they can trash that, they can if they can trash the relational model between men and women, they can trash you know marriage. They can trash the whole gospel. Yeah. Well, the, maybe that's, that's why there is so much, if you like, people not getting married today because they don't want to. Do, and then people change the marriage vows, don't they? Yeah. Have you noticed that though? It's usually the women that change the marriage vows yeah. to obey and all of that, till death do we part. Yeah. So we're all, that because they've, they've, as it were, they've changed the model, um, the, model the new model doesn't work. So they're continually compensating and adding different things and multiple genders. And, you know, before you know, there's a hundred genders and, and it's all trying to patch up this, this completely inverted model. Um, so I, I think the scriptures is clear. You, you know, let's have husband and wife. The man takes responsibility. And by taking responsibility, 
God will judge as he did Adam. You know, Adam was the one who was judged um, by the sweat of your brow. Sin came through the man. I mean, in one sense, salvation came through the women. <laughs> through the woman and the women. Yes. Yeah. Um, and also through the scriptures. People say, oh, well, it's, it's all very male dominated. Um, the devil is, is always in the masculine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not what, how it's portrayed and by a gave, modern... Yeah, who gave birth to Jesus? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> not Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, very important point. So the verse is, Howard mentioned, is in Haggai 2, verse 7. Oh, is it? Hang on a sec. Okay. I think, I, I'm saying that because I absolutely trust the anonymous viewer who's written this, written this text. Okay. Um, Carry on. Shall I have a go now? Leslie has written, regarding Judas, we need to be careful when trying to read the mind of Judas. The scripture says Satan had entered in. Regarding applying scriptures to modern day economics or political movement, we need to be aware that we are often westernizing prophetic scriptures that are written for mankind globally. There are countries across the globe where uh, law has not broken down or where there is no economic inflation and where there is no rumors of war. The scriptures are for the world, not just for the Western world. Yet, interestingly, they are for the world, but they're also for us here and now, at this in Surbiton or wherever we are. So the, the scriptures are not just, you can't say, oh, well, it's only for the world. It's very localized as well. And prophecies are amazing. If you look at how in the New Testament, how they were applied, that is, is more liberal, as it were, than we can often be with prophecies. We try and say, oh, well, it has to be this or it has to be that. But I think by his spirit, the Lord can reveal to us, I've especially got when a prophecy has been fulfilled. Right. I've got Haggai, but what was it? He did say, I think, did he say 2 verse 7? I've, I've got to go back to that one. Okay, hang on a Is it in there? Um, and it reads, yeah, I will shake all the nations and they will come uh, with the wealth of all the nations and I will fill the house uh, with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver yeah. is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. Um, but that's... You wanted the one on pushing. Yeah, yeah. So we'll That's keep still it. a good one as well. Oh, here you go. Daniel 8, verse 4. Daniel 8. I only need to look down at the, the text. I saw the ram pushing westward, and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Is that the one? Keep going. That, interestingly, well, I've only got that verse. Okay. Um, it wasn't the one I was thinking of, no. but they're all, you know, they're all similar. In the that ram sense. and the goat is an interesting one, because the ram, if I'm, if I'm correct, was the Medo-Persians, and the goat was Alexander the Great. And then out of... Out of that came the four kings. Four generals. Yeah, the four generals yeah. of Alexander. Amazing. Remarkable. And then it even goes right down to Antiochus Epiphanes and said he's tr he trod truth, he stamped truth into the ground. Mm. And it's there in that scripture. A, pro a prophecy, a, and he, historians look at Daniel and they acknowledge that it, he wrote it before the events took place. Yeah. And they say it is not... Christian historians, historians. Yeah, it is a remarkable book. Got Richard Dawkins to admit that those scriptures were written before Christ. Yeah, you know, so at least yeah. you know exactly, exactly. To to see all of the Gentile kingdoms, someone else has written Daniel chapter eleven verse forty. You saw it. Daniel eleven. So chew on that. Verse one. forty. Yes. Okay. And the end time. And at the end time, the king of the south will collide with him and the king of the north will storm against him with chariots and horsemen and tanks. No, I'm only joking. Yeah. And with many ships, of course, and will enter the country to pass through. And he will also enter the beautiful land and many uh, countries will fall, but these will be rescued from out of the, his hand, Edom, Moab, and the foremost sons of Ammon. Mm. Not quite, Not quite. One, but there's, again, all pointing to it the is. time. It when is. they come against Israel, really, at, but they'll be pushing one another for power and, you know, flexing their muscles. Yeah. I've always found it amazing that Moscow is due north of Jerusalem, mm. so the land of the north and the bear. Everyone talks about them as the Russian bear, and, yeah. and it talks about them. And then the hook being pulled. And in one sense, the Syria conflict hooked Putin. He couldn't resist getting in there no, to get I his know. warm seaport, which is, was the deal with yeah. Assad. 
that he could have a, a so port on the Mediterranean. Could, if he was a religious man, if he was Russian Orthodox believer, yeah. how could he partake in something as, as evil as helping um, that particular... Well... What was his name again? Vladimir Putin. No, no, the uh, Syrian leader at that time. Uh, Bashar al-Assad, he's still, still there. Still there. But I mean, the thing is, how could he... Because they don't read the prophecies. Blow up all of the, the hospitals, the schools, and uh, all that uh, terrible destruction in Syria. You know, and eight million people are displaced. He had a, he 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 departed not from the sins of his father, and his father was even more evil. Mm. You know, his father w wasn't. You know, there was a, a northern Syrian city that he just gassed them all. So you know, dropping a few barrel bombs on on his civilians. Mm. I mean, it is horrific, isn't it? It's millions in Syria. But, yeah, these events are, it seem to be converging on the things that are scriptural. And, yeah, how could, so the question was with Putin being Russian Orthodox. Well, the Russian Orthodox, if you read Arnold Fruchtenbaum, they, they basically, all of the Orthodox came out of Eastern Orthodoxy, which was the Eastern arm of the Roman Empire. And the, the Roman Catholic Church came out of Rome, which was the Western. So Const when, when Constantinople fell the, uh, and to, to Islam, the, the Orthodox spread in all directions. But the, you had the Syrian Orthodox, you, you know, didn't go too far. You, you had the um, Greek Orthodox, which consi they considered themselves the Mother Church because of the scriptures but written in Greek. But the Russian went right to the north and they, and they kept the traditions of the orthodoxy. But they're quite similar to Roman Catholicism. So it's like a state's religion as opposed to a personal belief. So people that say, oh, well, he's Russian Orthodox, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has a personal faith. Mm. But well, they do have a tradition. Okay, we've got about probably 30 seconds or so left. But You're joking. One more. Yeah, one more. What more. a pity. Yeah. Two and a well, half Well, Les, Les has come back and just said suicide is wrong. It is, a, sorry, by the way, all the a myriad of people that have written, but I've been going mm. in order. Um, it is wrong. It is a sin, but only God knows the heart. I would say that if a believer committed suicide, you cannot say with certainty that they lost their salvation. I completely agree with that. Because they could have been under a severe oppression from the enemy, affecting their mental faculties that they yes. did not know what they were doing. Thank you. I, I just somewhat agree comment. with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And um, come on, another. So one. I'm still. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to go right to the top and get someone mm -hmm. who's just come in. So this is from Norma in Nuneaton. Were you blind when you lived in the northeast? Children were brought up by two women, a grandmother and mother. Man would not be seen dead with a young child. Men only thought of themselves. Many women would stand outside pubs or clubs in order to get some of the pay back in yeah. before he drank. That's absolutely true. It's true. I can't, I can't read the rest of that no. email. No, very That's, true. I saw that. I, I used to that pay out own, money. My aunt and uncle, yeah. I know. My aunt had to take them the wages. Irresponsibility again. Mm. So that's yeah. not sonship. No, exactly. And uh, we're like 5,000 years down the line from perfection and uh, disobedience. Yeah. Mm the laws of God. Yeah. Um, we'll be back in the morning. I think we're literally near to the end. Have, yeah. Oh, we've got one minute. I thought we were 30 seconds. Yes. Oh, I could carry on reading this then. Um, they would get the pay packet before they drank and smoked it. I ran a factory as a little kid in my 20s. We pay the money out on the Thursday. On the Friday, they would booze it all the way Thursday night. Yeah. On the Friday, they'd be asking for a sub yeah. you know, to carry them over the oh, weekend. Oh my goodness. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Very, Tragic. very sad, yeah. But uh, that's not following God's example of what a man should be and yeah. uh, how a family should operate. But we've moved far away from that. But it's not too late to get try and put ourselves and our lives together in a way that is honouring to God and also to our family. So, Tim, and as always, thank you very much. Enjoyed the time and the fellowship tonight yeah. before the programme as well, which we always do. You know, we'll see you in the morning. And see you in the morning. Join us in the morning uh, for our mornings with Tim and myself. Meanwhile, take care of yourself and each other. God bless.